welcome to the SC2K show, our favorite beat em ups and fighting games. This is Ron Moore along with the J Man and Dustin. <laughs> and that's what why is it Ron Moore, J Man and just Dustin? Can I have a cool name? I wasn't sure what your internet name was. Uh you can I don't know. I, it's Dustin, I guess. So I guess that'll suffice. That is that is my real name. J Man? <laughs> it's like that. Your your parents were like, "Oh wait, we want to go with Jay, but he's a cool man." Well, Jay man, there. there. It was the seventies. Mm. Oh yeah, no. y'all can refer to me by my Twitter handle, Created Love, or my PSN handle, whatever. Oh, so uh, Dustin. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Close enough. Not, not Gen two, not Gen two. Another Dustin is with us today. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, and. Yeah, so we're going to discuss our favorite fighting games. First, I was going to call it just uh, fighting games, but then I think we got said, well, what kind? I go, fighting games. He goes, yeah, but there's different genres. There's also beat-em-ups. I go, oh, all right, fine. Beat-em-ups and fighting games. <laughs> and cat fighting games. No, um, and so, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and start us off with, uh, which is no secret, which is my favorite um a side scrolling beat 'em up fighting game of all time, the Streets of Rage series. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think it's honestly is the best one of all time. I mean, some people say Double Dragon better, but no, I don't think so. Um, and Streets of Rage is just freaking epic. Now, not the third one. I was really disappointed in the third one. Uh, I mean, different levels, but um, the Streets of Rage series one, two, and the remake, the fan made game that came out uh, like years ago. Uh, real epic fighting games. It never really gets old. You can always go back and play those. They've aged really well. And Street of Rage 1 was the very first Sega Genesis game I've ever, I've ever beat. And so that was cool. Um, the soundtracks to the game, the, the, the soundtracks to the series is real epic. And Angel has said one time that um, Street of Rage has like the best techno music he's ever heard. And Angel loves techno music. And so that really says a lot. And, yeah, just the, the fighting, uh, the, the gameplay, you know, the fighting mechanics and the characters. I really can't think of anything bad about Streets of Rage, except that the ending to Part 2 was kind of lame. And, and then again, Part 3 kind of sucked. But I think my favorite out of the series, uh, out of 1, 2, and 3, is definitely 2. Yes. Streets of Rage 2 is Streets of Rage 1 on steroids. Hmm. I mean, it blew part one out of the water. And then, of course, the remake. Uh, well, the remake's my favorite out of all uh, um, four of them, but not counting the remake. As far as the original three, you know, part two is my favorite. And the remake is incorporates one, two, and three together. And so that game is real addictive. And, but yeah, so Streets of Rage, definitely my favorite uh, beat-em-up final game of all time. What do you think, J-Man? Love Streets of Rage. Uh mainly Streets of Rage 2. Uh, my favorite on Super Nintendo was Final Fight. Yeah, I actually liked Final Fight better on Super Nintendo than I did in the arcade. Um, and not just because you had to pop in a quarter or sometimes 50 cents, you know, per play. But I enjoyed the music a lot better and just the, the overall gameplay of it. Oh, that man, was my I favorite. Um, while it. we're just talking about, yeah, beat-em-ups. Yeah. yeah, I really hated the SNES version of Final Fight. I was uh, uh, one, I don't know why they were thinking only one player, but I mean you could choose other characters, but it's only one player. Like, like, why not make it a, a side-scrolling fighting game with like three playable characters, two players? All right, well, okay, yeah, that was a big oops uh, where they released that game, and later on they had Final Fight Guy. Yeah. But I think in that one you couldn't be uh, uh, Hagar, or couldn't be uh, the other guy. Yeah, I really liked uh, I like Gal. <laughs> Gal, okay. <laughs> no, uh, but uh, just uh, sorry, uh, Crazy Love. What do you, <laughs> you think? You about? can call me Dustin. It's fine. Um, you know, I don't favorite beat 'em up. I don't know. I really dug River City Ransom for the NES. Like, oh yeah, that was that was probably one of my favorites. Um, if I recall, it's been forever since I played it. I'm pretty sure it's multiplayer. Um, yeah, I think me and my brother used to play it. I can't remember if we used to play it or I used to watch him play it. Or I can't. It's blurry at this point. But like playing it on the NES was awesome because 
like I don't know that was like the first console that that I ever had and uh, just there was like this one level where you could jump on a motorcycle and just knock people off of the motorcycle with your foot and it was just the favorite the favorite moment in like my NES um, history I suppose but but also like I really like that one, but I think I might like if we're uh, Battle Toads better. Um, oh yeah, Battle Toads is incredibly fun, and I, the only reason I'm not sure that Battle Toads just comes up on top is like, what was it level four where you're jumping on those speeder bikes and you had to memorize like which road to jump onto, or you just hit and die all the time. I thought that was absolutely ridiculous, but um, beat 'em up wise, those are my favorites. Yep, you're yeah, you're talking to a huge Battletoads fan here. I I don't know. I kind of don't consider that a beat 'em up, but I mean, yeah, in a way, it is. It's like it's kind of an all around game, but yeah. how, how's how's that like not a beat 'em up? Like you're you've got the two D plane. You're just moving along and you're punching stuff. Like well, like you said, uh, you're the motor riding on speed car. bikes. Uh, you know, clinger winger, rat race. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, there's a lot of other things involved in that game. I mean, you know, it's not like Final Fight where you just, you know, or Street to Rage. Right, where you're literally just hitting stuff. But it is the S2K, so it's yeah. the S2K. It is more than okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, I love Battletoads. But yeah, yeah, Battletoads is a mixture of everything, like you said, all around. It can be classified as a beat 'em up. I think it's mainly classified as action, which I guess also falls in the category of. Um, you know, beat 'em ups. Um, I don't know. It's kind of genre of video games gets confusing. I got confused with Shadowgate. I thought it was a RPG, but it's not. It's a point and click. And but anyway, hey, what I mean, about uh, Battle Toads uh, and um, uh, Double Dragon? Double Dragon. Yeah, yeah the crossover. Yeah, that, that, that's more of a beat 'em up, I would say, because yeah, there's a speed there, there's a speed bike level, and there's also a shooting level. Um, but that yeah, that would be yeah. That was that more was more geared towards beat 'em up. Awesome game as well. I've never played that one. I think it was like the first Nintendo Power magazine that I got that was on the cover though. I, oh, cool! And I always thought uh, what's your name was pretty hot. I don't know the villain's name. <laughs> oh, you love the Dark Queen. Mm. Dark Queen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a while back, for those of you who don't know, me and J Man uh, did a low budget let's let's play of Battle Toads yes. back in two thousand nine. So a low budget what qualifies for low budget? Oh, uh, because we're low budget. Right. Well, long it's long story behind that. My Ron Moore channel started with me calling my reviews low budget reviews because I would put the webcam in front of the TV. I didn't know how to use screen capture at the time. And so I would just dub it low budget reviews to kind of like kind of be funny about it because I was embarrassed by the low quality. And then we just stuck with the name ever since and then uh, instead of a let but the difference between a let's play and a low budget let's play is uh, usually, you know, let's play is just a, you know, someone playing the game. And, but since it's on my channel in a low budget let's play, it's not just me doing it by myself. It's a co-op let's play. Mm. It's a low budget let's play because it usually, low budget review usually means me and another person doing the review. And it's just kind of like something I trademarked on my channel. And, um, but yeah, we did that a while back. And that was pretty fun. Um. Absolutely. And purple? Um, Mortal Kombat! <laughs> there it yeah, is. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. Um, actually, the only, like, that's really all I can talk about was Mortal Kombat, because that's all I really played. Um, I don't think it was a Mortal Kombat. It was like an X-Men game, but it was basically Mortal Kombat, only it was with the X-Men characters. I played that game. I feel bad for not knowing the name of it, but whatever. I'm a girl. Who cares? And then, <laughs> and then the Mortal Kombat. I like played that. Oh man, I just played them like religiously because I love them so much. And I was horrible at them, but I didn't care. I still like playing them. So yeah, that's the girl's perspective. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the game you talking about. X Men. But it's not Mortal Kombat. It's not Marvel vs. That's what I was thinking. Was, I don't... But that was, like, before that, I think. Yeah, I think it was. Because a lot of people say that when I describe it to them. But I don't think that's what it was. I think it was solely X-Men characters. Hmm. Well, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I feel like I can kind of remember it. Uh, there's, man, for Sega Genesis, I don't know if that qualifies as a beat-em-up, though. Yeah, the Genesis. Um, 64? 
No, it was on, I don't know whose console it was. I don't remember what it was. Because uh, it wasn't mine. <laughs> yeah, Mortal Kombat, definitely. ECW. ECW Combat. And, uh... <laughs> that's, I don't know what the heck that reference is. ECW is a reference that we use. Uh, it means cool or something awesome. Uh... ECW used to be a wrestling company, and uh, the, when something awesome would happen, the crowd would chant, ECW, ECW, and so now we incorporate that into our little uh, uh, thing, whatever we do, we talk about something cool, oh, that's ECW, that's ECW, so just to fill you in on that, um, yeah, Mortal Kombat really was ECW, I mean, you got people killing each other, and yeah. in fact, that was something Wait, so uh, awesome. Did y'all... Did y'all ever play uh, Primal Rage, like in the arcade or on the Super Nintendo? Oh, yes. Uh, 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 Super Nintendo, or not Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Uh, I put, we had the Super Nintendo one, but we originally played it. Our movie theater had the arcade, and my brother had learned how to, um, he, he always played the monkey. The monkey. Yeah, the, and did the part. Oh, he, there was, uh, his combo, like at the end he would pee on me, and he just thought... <laughs> He just, know about that. Like, like to add insult to injury, he would just he would just rake me because he was so much better at fighting games than me. And at the end of it, like it would end with the monkey turning around and you just see just piss coming up and hit my character. And I'm like, wow, this is this is definitely uh, humiliating. That was like the uh, the first ever tea bag. <laughs> yeah. Did you get pissed off? <laughs> you know what? I never no, we got, got pissed on. <laughs> yeah, I never got uh, really upset with my brother until we picked up um, uh, the um, Killer Instinct for the Super Nintendo. And oh, I was saving that, but yes. Oh, sorry to pull that out. Well, he he'd uh, always be he'd be Glacier. He'd be Glacier, and he would Glacier. just. Uh, yeah, sorry, and uh, he would just immediately run you into a combo if you. Literally, at the beginning of the match, he would do this one move over and over again. And so you would just kind of try to dodge him, jump over him, do whatever you could, or try to break it, because otherwise he would throw you into an ultra combo, and you wouldn't, it'd yeah. be, you'd be incapable of getting out, and you'd die instantly. I mean, he'd sit there and hit the buttons. The guy would yell, ultra, ultra, ultra. And that's, that's when I about stopped playing games with my brother. That was... Yeah. Uh, speaking of Killer Instinct, um, my favorite, uh, I don't, I don't know what to call it, I guess fighting game, uh, my favorite fighting game of all time, that game, love it, it's awesome because it's not like round one, round two, you know, your, your rounds are, uh, I guess concurrent, right, you, you know, when, when your first health meter falls, you get back up and it's action again. Yeah, they don't. And um, you know, if if you don't get beat in like an ultra combo, you do actually have a chance to come back as danger, danger, danger. And you can you can hit buttons fast enough and actually come back like if it's a really close match. Um, but yeah, if you get caught in an ultra combo, you're done. There's no danger. You're in danger. Yeah. And just you know, the combo idea um, has extended to other games in time. And, and, I mean, that's awesome to, to see, you know, like, except we're talking about, like, Street Fighter, of course. I mean, that's the obvious, but, you know, Killer Instinct was, and I think I said that wrong, but Killer Instinct, there we go, was the ultimate. Yeah. Didn't like the 64 game very well, but, man, they, they did it really good um, in their arcade, the, the, the first one, and... Uh, also, uh, yeah, in, in, in the arcade as well. Yes, very often. Awesome. I, I mean, it. SNES, my bad. Yeah, I love the 64 version. It was like, uh, well, compared to the home ports, the 64 version was like, it just got amped up from the Super Nintendo version. Yeah, visually, I mean, it's it's cool. I, I don't know. I think some mechanics, uh, just, you know, my, my own opinion, uh, I think personally... I love the soundtrack on, on both games, uh, SNES and 64. Um, I mean, it was just, it, I really loved Killer Instinct 64. Uh, I was never good at Killer Instinct, uh, either either game. I was never good at it. 
uh, but I enjoyed it because it's such a great game and just uh, great graphics and soundtrack and the gameplay, the combos. I was never good at doing that, but it was fun. I got I had fun learning how to do it. And some of my favorite characters were Jago. Uh, yeah. I think uh, he had the hardest combos on the yeah. uh, Super Nintendo and uh, 64. Yeah, I think Orchid was the best I was with. I think she was pretty easy to control. She had the highest uh, like like hit combos. I loved uh, Saber Wolf and Cinder. Yes. And Riptor is okay. I love Riptor's music. Purple loves Saber Wolf. Uh, yes, yeah, Saber Wolf is my favorite of watching what he's shown me in that game. If I had been able to play that, I probably would have never even touched Mortal Kombat because I would have been like, no, it's okay. I don't care. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he had a uh, Spinal Tap or whatever his name is. <laughs> Spinal. Uh, <laughs> Tap. Actually, I didn't know that but this two years later. I think uh, the Spinal on the SNES and the one on 64 are different, different characters, different Spinals. I don't, like, well, I mean, they're just they're bones, so. <laughs> yeah, so you can't tell the difference. I mean, the story uh, and killer instinct has never been, you know, all that well developed. I, I do want to say that. Um, I was a little, I guess, displeased that Cinder um, was not, like, continued in, in further Killer Instinct games. Yeah, really. Because I always liked him. I mean, Thunder, all right, whatever. They, they kind of changed into the, the guy in, uh, you know, Gold. Forgot that, I, I forget that guy's name. Um, uh, wait, are you talking about Tomahawk? No. Yeah, or whatever his name. Tomahawk. Well, I mean, there was uh, uh, Chief on the... Yeah, Chief, there was Chief Thunder. Chief Thunder in, the, in, the, in the, the first arcade game in Super Nintendo, but then I don't know. They, they kind of changed it to like a Triple H looking guy. Oh, Tusk. Yeah. Which I mean, yeah. it's really not a. It's, I guess, like a, a slight comparison. But you know, there was no Cinder after that. Maybe Fantastic Four got mad, and <laughs> they were like, "Flame on!" I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but it sucks because I, I, I like Cinder and kind of sucked it. Oh, uh, what about, uh, was it uh, Clay Fighters for the Super Nintendo? That was fun. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've heard about that. I never actually got to play that. i just seen characters of it in Nintendo Power Magazine. I've seen the characters of the game, like some opera singer, and then some Elvis fighter. And, I don't know. It's kind of weird. And Snowman. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. That go kind ahead, of go reminds ahead. me of a Toe Jam and Earl, but that's not a beat 'em up or or a fighting game. So yeah, that, they had that taffy guy that kind of looked like a Toe Jam. Yeah, well, we're not talking about Bear or We Guy in this podcast. Um, <laughs> hey, but we all want to fight him, so we want to beat him up too. So <laughs> just kidding, guys. <laughs> oh, shut up. Oh. Um, and well, back to Karen Instinct. I was going to say. Tusk, that uh, Conan, Conan the Barbarian, whatever you want to call him, yeah, he was he was pretty cool. Oh yeah, uh, Conan O'Brien. Yeah, Conan, Conan O'Brien. He's a uh, unlockable. <laughs> he, he and Jay Leno fight to death. Who gets to take over late night TV and yeah. Yeah, his finishing uh, combo. He uses hair to. <laughs> that's uh, that's ironic because uh, Maximum Carnage for the Super Nintendo. There was those chicks that use their hair. They spun it around to, to hit you. I don't know if you ever played that. It's beat them up. Uh, you played as Spider-Man or Venom. I remember Sindel had a, for Mortal Kombat 3, had a finishing move where she would uh, grab you with her hair and keep and spin you around to all your skin and bones just flew off. Cool. Yeah. And uh, I guess she gave, uh, she's the one that composed the music. I whip my hair back and forth, I whip my hair. Oh, God. What about, wow. uh, <laughs> what about spin it right round, baby, right round, like a record? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, Mortal Kombat Killer Instinct are real similar in some ways because you know they both had finishing moves while Street Fighter didn't. And some people thought because of the simple fact that Mortal Kombat had finishing moves that it was automatically a better game than Street Fighter. And I, I really beg to differ on that. I mean, back in the day, I still thought Street Fighter was a better fighting game than Mortal Kombat, and I enjoyed Street Fighter more. Absolutely. I mean, blood and gore is going to attract people to video games, and that's why a lot of people say, oh, wow, you can actually kill people with this. You can't do that in Street Fighter. And my response was, so? <laughs> it don't mean it's a better overall fighting game. I mean, Mortal Kombat is fun, but 
as far as like the overall fighting game and the strategy of it and the gameplay, Street Fighter is so much better, so much well rounded. I, I mean, go ahead. I may be wrong about this, but I do believe that Mortal Kombat came after uh, Street Fighter 2. I believe uh, I, you're correct. Yeah. Because I mean, it, that. it kind of just seems that way just based on uh, some of the, the fighting. Um, you know, like in, in Street Fighter, you can't go punch, 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 punch. And, of course, you can't knock somebody off a bridge and, you know, splat them into spikes or anything like that. But, um, <laughs> and, and purple, yeah, loves this. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, yeah, Street Fighter 2 just had much better game mechanics. Yeah. In my opinion, much more enjoyable. And back then, during the Mortal Kombat Street Fighter Wars, I was a big fanboy of Street Fighter. So, uh, and I remember the commercial for Sega Genesis. They they had the Street Fighter Two Special Champion Edition commercial, and it showed the security guard walking around the video store, which is closed at night. He hears a disturbance in one of the aisles, so he, he walks down the aisle, and uh, not Ric Flair, but walk down that aisle anyway. Um, Phil. And he uh, he notices a noise, and what happens was Blanca's uh, hand comes out of the Street Fighter box and grabs Mortal Kombat and crushes it. And I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> you see that? Street Fighter is better. See the commercial? The commercial. Well, if you were basing all of your judgments on the video games based off of their crappy spinoff movies, I'd say the Mortal Kombat had the better movie than your Street Fighter movie. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> Yeah, I did. Mortal Kombat 1, the movie, did. The second one was terrible. I didn't know Shao Kahn and Raiden were brothers. What the heck? Anyway. <laughs> and it's not canon. It's not canon, Ron. Just don't think about it. <laughs> now, Street Fighter, the movie, it was lame. But I still liked it. And maybe that's because I've always liked Street Fighter. Of course! But what it was, I, you know, I liked it back then. Back then, you are a kid, you just had <laughs> just made a Street Fighter movie. Even though, of course, there's a lot of disappointments in it. Like, I don't think T-Hawk was even in the movie. Uh, or if he was, it didn't look like him at all. And Wait, who? You, T-Hawk. Oh, uh, Tebow? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got the storylines mixed up. And I remember reading the Street Fighter magazine, you know, that promoted the movie. Steven D'Souza, whatever director's name is, that helped direct Die Hard or whatever he did before that. Um, he said he had his son with him sometimes on the set to help him direct the movie because, you know, his son plays Street Fighter and he knows the storylines better than he does. Well, either he didn't listen to his son or his son doesn't know what he's talking about because a lot of the storylines in that movie was messed up. You know, Blanca and Charlie are not the same person. Uh, Dallasine wasn't really a scientist. And DJ is one of the good guys, if I understand, or definitely not a ma member of Shadow Lou or Shadow Law, whatever Bison's gang was. Balrog is supposed to be a bad guy. Why is he teaming up with Chun Li, going up against Bison and Sagat? Like, so many things about that movie was wrong, but for what it was, I thought it was great. And there were some definitely some funny moments to it, like uh, this destruction going on on TV and saying, "Go quick, change the channel." <laughs> and so it was. Yeah, I enjoyed the movie. But anyway, back to games. Um, yes. Yeah, are definitely my favorite fighting game. Of all tournament fighting game of all time, I really loved it, and uh, I mean, especially uh, Street Fighter Three was real good, but I sucked at it. That game is advanced. I mean, I, I I'm not good at parrying. I can't parry anything to save my life, but it's a good game, well designed, and yeah, Street Fighter Three is definitely uh, I mean, definitely ECW. What do you think, J Man? Yeah, um, I actually want to add something to uh, Street Fighter. Um, we got EX plus Alpha and Street Fighter 2 Turbo and yeah. Super Street Fighter. That's actually a really good game. I actually like that better than Street Fighter 2. Um, we got 30 other Street Fighters. I mean, that's well, that's just, you know, Capcom. Why so many games? Oh, yeah, because good. people will buy them. That's right. right. That's exactly how uh, Super Street Fighter 4, uh, when they released that, it was like, okay, here's Super Street... Or, no, it was just Street Fighter 4, and then I went and picked that up, and I loved it. And then, like, oh, wait, here's 
Super Street Fighter 4 would have extra characters and extra stages. I'm like, all right, well, here's another right. $6. And then it's like, oh, well, here's Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade. Even more characters, even more stages. And I'm like, okay, I'll drop another 60 And then by the time I'd finished, yep. I'd bought the same game three times. <laughs> I've spent like well over a hundred and fifty dollars just to, and I'm like, whoa, they just got me. And they're like, this hurts all around. Can I just sign my soul to Capcom and you just give me them when they come out? Like, and, and it was sad because I was buying uh, Marvel vs. Capcom three in between those purchases. I was like, because they did the the original release and then they did the the second release, which was supposed to be just add on content, and and then before you know that's. That's how it works. It's, that's marketing, planning. Yeah. Those. They, they, they're the evil. Yeah. Uh. Well, they were, they were the games. Oh, we can't. Oh, I just I messed up, Ronnie. I mentioned Nintendo. Oh, we have to edit it out, right? Or yep. you have to pay them. I it's going to be taken down. <laughs> we'll just hasn't bleep. even hasn't even been uploaded yet. It's we'll already just taken down. Bleep it out. Just bleep it out every time we say the N word. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> Yep. Bleak, yeah, bleak though. Bleak though. Yeah. Somebody knocked my door. Uh, you need to take down that uh, podcast. We haven't put it up yet. Yeah, that's right. You... <laughs> that's uh, two strikes, Ronnie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's Reggie Phil's IMA. He's like, oh, no, Ron, no. Yeah. <laughs> but here's our 2DS. You want this, don't you? Stop talking about our stuff on the Internet. Right. Yeah. We don't want you to buy it. We don't want you to spread the word about stuff we're trying to sell. And really. if you are, we're going to we're going to dime and nickel you. Nickel and dime for those who don't know what that is. <laughs> we're going to beat you up and and through you in fighting games. There we go. Still funny. Yeah. Um Now, okay, now here's a good beat 'em up. I can't believe we didn't talk about this sooner what we think. An awesome game for the NES. Bad Street Brawler. <laughs> you had to go there. You know what? I'm glad that the uh, we guy's not here because he would be all Target Renegade. So at oh, least yeah. we. Oh wait, damn it! <laughs> we would have avoided it if I wouldn't have said anything about it. Well, what, well, well, hold on. No, let, let's do talk about it because it's fun to make fun of it. Um, Target Renegade sucks, but Bad Street Brawler. It's ten times worse. <laughs> I it don't. Uh, maybe. Like, like a bad street ball. I mean, maybe uh, like like one point five times worse. Well, first of all, Target Renegade has a good, decent soundtrack. First of all, second, the gameplay of it is just a little, a little bit better. Uh, but just the overall experience of Bad Street Brawler is a joke. I mean, it was made by Mattel. Uh, well, I don't know if it's made or published, whatever, by Mattel and made by someone else, but. Mattel is the same company, for those of you who don't know, uh, made it, Barbie. It might have been one of those Codemaster games. I'm not sure about that. I'm probably wrong. But. It looks sucky enough to be it. I, I mean, Bash Street Brawler is kind of like an Action 52 game on steroids. Um, it's it just... Don't, don't diss steroids like, steroids like that. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> but Bash ba Street... Ah, Bad Street uh, USA or Michael PSA, whatever points for reference right there. Um, it's like, it's awful. I first seen the review, Spunk did it a while back, and Spunky's not around anymore, but he used to do a lot of reviews on YouTube. And he reviewed Bad Street Brawler, and his review of it was hilarious. You got this guy wearing, he looks like a Duke Nukem reject wearing Daisy Dukes in a vest. And he does some weird move where it looks like he's Taking to the ground and rubbing and touching on you. It's like, it's like a takedown move, but it looks awkward. And the music is so pathetic. I did, actually did a video of this a while back in 2008. Parody reviews. Pre-Skip Rogers. Um, I did a parody review of it. And it was just uh, so terrible. I mean, probably the worst beat-em-up game I've ever seen. Uh, it's, just, it's just a joke. And... And, and like the bottom of the screen, you have to go. For those of you listening, just go check it out for yourself. I cannot explain it good enough on how horrible it is. And you got the, not the yeah your energy bar or whatever your task bar on the bottom of the screen, whatever it's called. Uh, that's like taking up half the screen already. Not that you want to see the game, but it sucks. And it just the game is just atrocious. It's the worst game. 
have uh, have you seen it, J Man? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Um, but on top of that, I think you're just in in uh, denial. <laughs> yeah, you got me. No, it, it 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 sucks. It's awful. Um, doesn't target uh, doesn't target Renegade do the same thing? Target Renegade just yeah it does, but it it does it less sucky. <laughs> I guess. I mean, it's like comparing shit to shit. So. Yeah, but. To honestly, uh, overall experience though, Target Renegade is much better. It, 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 that's like I don't know, it's not saying much, but it's kind of like, go oh, pick your, pick your poison. Well, either way, it's gonna suck, but I'll pick this one because this right. one sucks less. And yeah, Bash Street Brawler. Oh, I just wish Spunky's review was still up because that's what made me subscribe to him. <laughs> it was hilarious. That was a good review. Yes. Yeah, the game is just awful. But let's talk about a game that's not awful. We touched upon this a little bit earlier. Double Dragon, the Double Dragon series. Yes. Love Double Dragon. Um, I never really played much of Super Double Dragon. I played a little bit when I was a kid, but not that much. Um, I mainly played the first three, and two is my favorite out of those three. Yes, sir. And J-Man did a pretty good review of it a while back, Double Dragon 2, The Revenge. I got a second place in the contest. Yay. That's right. <laughs> and... Uh, and I, I, play, I played the arcade version as well. We did a low-budget review of that back in 2008 of uh, Double Dragon, the arcade version. We played on Xbox Live, Live Arcade. And, yeah, uh, awesome series. However, uh, Part 3, eh. It part sucks. Three, part, to me, I thought Part 3 was decent. But, yeah, compared to Part 2, it really sucks. And, yeah, Double Dragon 2, The Revenge, though, that game is so epic, so awesome. And I mean, yeah, they got it. They got it right. Yeah, they got it right. And the the Double Dragon NES, though, and of course, it's not going to compare to the arcade. Right. But it didn't really. I don't know. It, it could have been better on the NES version, but what it was, though, it was still fun to play back in the day. And then just like Shoot Your Age Two put Blue Part One out of the water, here comes Double Dragon Two. Right. They got it right. It's it's actually a really good comparison. You know, to where one was, eh, it's, you know, it's all right. And then two, yes. And then the third one, oh, man. Don't YouTube just, it. Just, don't try to improve on something that's fine. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. They made the same mistake Sega did. One, Street Rage 1 was awesome. Part 2 was epic. Part 3, bombed. <laughs> it's like, oh, they should have. Well, I know you, it's kind of hard to make a part 2 and not make a part 3. You know, because like, oh, we gotta go to three now, because three's kind of like that third and final number. You know what I mean? To, to make a trilogy. Well, if you make it that shitty, then well, yeah, it's gonna be the final. <laughs> right. Until you know later days when AVGN gets you know popular, and then er then everything changes, and then people want to make remakes. Which you know, there's good ones, and then there's well bad ones like the uh, Double Dragon remake. I even know there's a remake of Double Dragon. Yep. And it's not very good. Oh. It's we the think bad it's ones. It's not like DuckTales, but that's not that. That's not what the podcast is about. Uh, <laughs> DuckTales, woo. -hoo. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Check out uh, my Let's Play, Shameless Plug. Anyway, um, <laughs> Dustin, what do you think about Double Dragon? Well, it's a good game. I, I played the NES one mostly. Um, I played the Super Nintendo one a bit. I played it in arcade like twice, maybe. Uh, never really had the money for such things, so I usually just ended up playing it at home, renting it out. Um, it's a good game. I actually uh, fondly remember um, doing the like we were talking about earlier, the Battle Toads um, uh, Double Dragon crossover. So, uh, and, and like I don't know why, but every time I every time I look at um, Double Dragon, I'm instantly reminded of Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. And so, I, every time I play that, I think of the, I think of, the, of that movie. But, yeah, it was a good game. Um, the music was good in it, too. I think that's one of the, it just was really catchy. You kept, you just kept playing it because it was just like this, uh, nice little beat going through the whole game. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and for the ES versions, I like, like, uh, the sound. Double Dragon 3 had a pretty good soundtrack. Um, Absolutely. What if one and two? If Double Dragon Three reminds me of Not Me on Elm Street, good soundtrack but sucky gameplay. Sucky game. Um, but anyway, 
I, yeah, I, I, I would, before uh, we, we move on, I'd like to add a little um, something extra to uh, well, Double Dragon 3. That game was made worse by the uh, commentary we did with Green, where the sound levels were awful. Oh, man. That was probably the worst S2K video. I don't know. Yeah, that, I mean, that could be contestable, but... Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, I rented Double Dragon 3 back... What was that? 91, I think? Maybe 92. I don't know. Didn't really like it, but... It just... It, it, it got made so worse by being a part of that Let's Play. Ugh. Well, you know, it's... A lot of the sequels, like Super Street Fighter 2, your Double Dragon 2, they're, they're usually better than the third... Mainly because the the developer will make the first, and you know it's a new IP. There's taking a, a risk, or they're they're bringing it on the console X for the first time, and it'll be really good. And it'll sell well, and so they'll do a sequel that will have like dramatically uh, better improvements um, on various mechanics, and then everyone will play that, and it'll be like you know extended roster of characters, or they'll have um, just a, a wider uh, arena or stage. And then, then they'll do the third, and I feel like that's usually like, oh, just to cash in on the franchise. So Absolutely. I, yes. I feel like yeah. that's what it is with most fighting games. Is like somewhere in the middle is the best one, uh, and then you just have just continual like, oh, well, we just got to keep cashing in on this, um, which is actually, you know, I don't know if it really counts, but uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Uh, was the best Smash Brother game I, I played, and just a fun. It's not really a fighting game. I, it's it kind of is. I don't know. It's kind of like a yeah. King I, of, I I think it qualifies definitely. Does I, it just reminds me like King of the Hill? Like it's just like an intense round of King of the Hill. So, but yeah. So I don't know. That's what I've kind of found out. Is like usually when you go with games, somewhere in the middle is like the be- It's like the definitive version, the one everyone talks about, the one everyone fondly remembers. That, that, that's actually a really good point. I mean, uh, well, all three of the uh, the, the Smash Brothers games. Um, me personally, love the first one. Love Melee. I love Brawl. Um, actually, Brawl is my favorite. And the reason why, well, that actually goes outside of the you know the criteria in the podcast, but the uh, subspace the misery. Yeah. Yes, the the battles are not as good as they were in Melee. I agree with you on that. But um, just a better game for me is uh, Brawl. But. You know, I think my reserves on Brawl were that the controls weren't as tight. For some reason, maybe it was just the GameCube controller, but in Melee, uh, you know, me and my cousin, we were, like, best with uh, Zelda sh- slash Sheik. And she was, like, a great just fighting character. And then when in, in Brawl, she got a little floaty and just not as responsive. And so it, I felt like even, actually, no, come to think of it, even plugging in the GameCube controllers into the Wii, which is how we played it, um, it just oh, didn't... Yeah, yeah. It, it just you didn't... You can't play that really with the Wii mode. Yeah, like, you're just... You turn it to side, it doesn't work. you got to have a GameCube controller. <laughs> I was in, uh, when Brawl first came out, uh, me, me and my, my brothers and my cousin, we played Melee, like, all the time. And we were so pro at it, we aced everybody. But when Brawl first came out, like, actually, like, a week before its release, I remember GameStop had a competition. And you could move up, and I was, like, looking at my brothers and my cousin, I'm like, we got this. We got this. Nope. Nope. Game's uh, not even out yet, and they give me the, <laughs> the freaking nunchuck and Wiimote, and I'm like... How am I supposed to play this? And so it was it was ridiculous. Um, got killed by like a twelve year old girl. <laughs> nice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was really disappointed. I was like that that was that was not my best showing. <laughs> Can I have a rematch? <laughs> and she probably just got completely lucky. Yeah, she probably Yay, I win. Oh, she was, she was, like, <laughs> I kid you not, this is how I lost. It was a three minute time match. She was just doing Link's, uh, I, like, I don't know what it is on the Wii mode anymore, uh, up B, like his... Oh, uh, uh, up stab. Yeah, or no, the one where um, when he's on the ground, he does the, the like, the windmill on the ground. Oh, um, uh, the, 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 
Oh, well, I was thinking of the sword thing. Oh, he just does the... I think the up stab is up A, and then, like, his little twirl is, is up B, I think. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. Like, uh, and so, yeah, she just close. sat near the edge, and I'm like, I'm, like, trying to get in on there, and I'm like, the controls, you know, I'm, I get knock off, knocked off, and I'm, like, kind of jumping to get back up, and um, I was like, this is, this is not, this is not the game that I used to play. Yeah, so, he's, he's a bad character depending on the stage that you're playing, you know, to, to get back into the field. Like, if you're playing on the, on like, the, uh, well, the first Pokemon stage, um, or the Kirby stage with the with the tree that blows different directions, Yeah. good luck with Link. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember, like, playing against people, uh, not in Smash Brothers, but, like, in, like, Target or Walmart, they have, like, Street Fighter on display. And then, like, I remember playing this one guy, this one kid. He would get too excited. Like, he, he would just want to, you know, it's just a simple match. He beat me. He's like, yes, yes, I won. Oh. And then whenever he would lose a round, he's like, oh, dang, man, man, come on. I was thinking, dude, chill. This is not a tournament, first of all. Second, no money's on the line. Chill out. Some people are just too patched overboard about you know, competition in video games. And... The, what's more annoying than that, though, I played, I did this in my video response to Magus a long time ago about Street Fighter. Um, someone, uh, there's this kid I was playing Street Fighter against, and the entire time that I was playing against him, he would go, <laughs> it's so annoying. Oh, the cheat stuff. Well, I mean, you know. No, the sound effects from his mouth. Oh, he, oh. <laughs> You should have beat him up in real life. <laughs> no, don't do that. I do not condone the beating of young children that are not your own. <laughs> yep, Chris Hansen will show up and that'll be it. <laughs> what are you doing here? Why don't you have a seat? Take yep, why don't you have a seat? Um, <laughs> we just caught you on camera. <laughs> yeah. Beating the crap out of a 12-year-old boy. It's okay, he's mine, he's my kid. Okay, all right, it's all right. Yeah, this, move this is the first time I've ever done this. <laughs> this is the first time, I swear. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, he normally just walks into the doorknobs, and, and, and today it was my fist. It's it's bizarre happenstance. We've been recording this location for the last three weeks. <laughs> would, you like to, would you like to see the footage? <laughs> oh, well, okay, maybe it's my third time. <laughs> Are the cops waiting for me? <laughs> yes, been a, they are. Been a bad week. Bad week. <laughs> Have the chat log here. They're gonna make their own beat 'em up game, <laughs> and you're the star. <laughs> and it's called prison. <laughs> yep. There's a yeah. There's a beat 'em up and other stuff. Yeah. Well. <laughs> here's, here's here's a terrible. Here's uh, uh, a tournament fight game. I'm sure none of you have heard of it. And that you better not say survival arts. Dang, dang it. Okay. Thank you. I, I knew uh, it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You know, I went to a uh, actual mental asylum. Yeah, yeah we'll get to that in one second. <laughs> okay. Get on, get on uh, what I'm going to talk about next. It's, it's called Street Smart, the Sega Genesis. In this game, nothing smart about it. What? Uh, yeah, it could not smart. be real. Yeah, Street Smart for Sega Genesis. I wish it wasn't real. Now, I, I granted, it's been years. I should do a long time to play that game. No, it came out. <laughs> I played it. No, but uh, I remember playing it and realized how much it sucks. It's just a horrible fighting game. With some fanboy posts a comment. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, um, is that yeah. is that based off of the 1987 movie Street Smart? I don't know. I didn't even know there was a Street Smart movie. Me neither. So, um, but it, it's just it's just terrible. Terrible. I remember I, to, I rented it from Blockbuster or Flix that weekend. I was like, man, I'm glad I'm taking this back. This is terrible. Nothing smart. More like road dumb, Phil. And yeah, it, it's just... Uh, yeah, you, well, you, you bought it? No, I rented it. I had rented it a long time ago when I was a kid. Did it have it like a... Like a uh, appealing cover. I don't remember. I, I guess I had two people fighting on the cover, and I was like, "Oh, cool!" Oh, you okay. know, you're a, right. a box cover, really. 
Yeah, back then you had no internet or you had right. magazines. But I mean, you, you, you're a kid walking in a rental store. Oh, this looks cool, and then you know, take it. I'm home with that. Stuff. I mean, like the the popular games were already rented out by the time you got there, and you're like, all right, what else did they got? Yeah. Oh, oh so yeah. It's kind of cool. I'll take it, and then you know, sometimes it worked out good, and, but other times, yeah. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's how I accidentally stumbled upon uh, Mario is Missing for the Super Nintendo. That was that was not a fun rental. Yeah, yeah, something was missing. <laughs> yeah, well, the fact that they, they, they decided to do an educational game with Mario was a ridiculously deviant strategy that I was unaware of, and so it ended up being a history lesson. And that's what happens when you get to Blockbuster a little too late. And you're like, oh, there's a Mario game I've never played before. And nope, they no, teach you about history and things. It's boring. boring, boring. So you did I actually, like, uh, well, you did actually learn <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, we made it. We beat the game. We had six days with it. We beat it. And um, I, they, they showed you pictures of the Eiffel Tower, like real life pictures. Um, Peach was like some sort of museum uh, curator. Uh, you played as Luigi. Uh, not, not really a fighting game, but as far as bad stories go of, of just sad rentals, it's, uh, that one scarred me. I'm with you on, like, getting the price out of a rental. Like, I've rented bad games before, like, uh, you know, uh, not while I was a child, but, you know, like, eh, like, like 64 games and stuff like that, and it's like, oh, man, this game sucks. But you know what? I'm going to get my money's worth. I'm going to beat this game anyways. I'm going right. to get through this. Yeah. You just don't want to burn your money. You're like, this right. is... Right, you're not going to show me a damn game. This I'm isn't what I thought it was, but happen. okay. Um, and uh, here's another cool fighting game. Uh, it's a fan-made game, but it's still cool. Cool beat em up Well, hold on a second. Uh, Ronnie, Ronnie a, keeps us oh. on track. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you do different things, and it's kind of like Battle Toads, but it's a fun beat em up a Bobo's Big Adventure. Good game. Yep. I've never played it, but I watched uh, your playthrough, and then I watched the... Uh, sorry, Ronnie, but I watched it like a better playthrough. <laughs> I'm only <laughs> saying that because, like, the, the, the person that played it, I'm not trying to dish or anything like that, but I'm just saying, like, the, the, the other guy that I watched it, like, it wasn't like a speed run, but, like, like, he, like, got through it, like, quicker. But there was yeah, no I commentary, so... Well, actually, actually, uh, I, actually, actually, I've been a for that. I didn't know how to play it, and yeah, but, but he's the one. I've been recorded it, and yeah, yeah, a yeah, fun remake. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, a Bobo's Big Adventure. A Bobo is one of the, those big uh, Debo-looking characters from Double Dragon. Um, and he had his own game. These, these people made an own fan game of of him, and he has to rescue his son and. Yeah, pretty awesome game. It's like different. They incorporate different NES games into that as a tribute to the NES. They got a little bit of Mega Man in there. They got uh, what else? A balloon fight. Um, and they have a yeah, a lot of references. Um, it's uh, tribute wise, just as good as I want to be the guy, but not near as hard. Yeah, I want to be the guy. Just be as hard. It is meant to be that way. Yeah, I want to be the guy, something totally different on a different level. I mean, it's um, like, it, it, it's fair, because there are save spots, um, and other things have come out since then that are, like, way harder, uh, but, but, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, perfectly. A fun game, Bubbles Big Adventure. Um. Let's see. Here. Uh, did did y'all play the uh, Scott Pilgrim game? Oh yes. Yes, I introduced that. Well, yeah. I introduced the um, which one was it, honey? It was the only Scott Pilgrim. The only game. one. Okay, well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she had it. Yeah, she had a little trial. Uh, she has an Xbox 360, and I have a PS3. Um, and she had like a little trial on there, and like I seen her play it in one day, and I was like, oh, it looks pretty cool. Give me that. <laughs> it wasn't okay. Maybe it was, but. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so I went on the, you know, the PSN thing and had a little trial and played it on there. It was pretty cool. Blah, blah, blah. Um, 
and then I seen that it was free on uh, uh, the PlayStation Plus thing, so I ordered a like a one one month. Okay, she's opening up a can, but it sounded really loud in there. <laughs> well, Sorry. Man. Okay. Anyways, um, so I got the one month one month package. Uh, just to, I mean, it was seventeen ninety nine to purchase that game, but the uh, you know the the one month package was like fifteen ninety nine or something like that. So. Right. Whatever. Played it. Awesome game. Yeah, it was, it's good fun. He I actually like got, got my wife to play it. So it was it, it was uh it was just tons of fun. Like it was surprising. They did uh the guy who made it um can't remember the name of the developer, but they uh, made a YouTube video of it actually originally, and the YouTube video was just so popular that it spun a movie in an actual game. Uh, I think the YouTube. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's uh, it's called Scott Pilgrim versus King Baby, I believe, and so they it was a couple design students, and they made it. Uh, they didn't make an actual game; they just made uh, a series of what looked like a game, like a cinematics of an old Super Nintendo or NES beat 'em up or whatever, and that it's like a six or eight minute video, and it's incredibly amazing to watch, and that video was so popular that it spun comic books the movie, and then the actual game. It's like the first, uh, it's, it's just crazy. It's a, it's a mock game that spun a game. <laughs> so. We had a, uh, uh, and she's, uh, she just wrote that down, the uh, Scott Pilgrim versus King, King, King Baby. Baby. Yeah, uh, we had a little dispute. Uh, well, it's S S2K, so. <laughs> um, we had a little dispute. <laughs> I know I'm blah, 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 but we had a little dispute. I'm going to say it like three more times. About uh, which came out first, the, uh, the the movie or the game? And I was saying the game spawned the movie, and she was saying the movie spawned the game. We were both wrong. Yes, uh, it's the it's the video of a fake video game that spawned a movie followed by the video game. So I so was the, like extra wrong. So well, the video the, the video game is based off of the YouTube video. Um, and then so is the movie. Uh, it's weird. Everything's based off of the YouTube video they did, and um, the the game came after the movie, though. Damn it! See, I was thinking that they made the game after the movie. Right. And yeah. Just, so we were both wrong. Yeah. Yeah, but I was extra wrong. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about uh, Bart versus the World? Uh. uh how about I beat you up for saying that? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> well, it's a it's a beat 'em up fighting game uh, podcast. That's all. <laughs> Whatever, Ronnie. You would, you know. Yeah, you're supposed to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. And we talked about this earlier, but I don't think we talked about it enough. Primal Rage or Primal Streets of Rage or whatever it's called. Um, I I didn't get to say my piece on it. Sega Genesis version. I really thought was lame. I did not like. Primal Rage for Sega Genesis. I cannot say the same for SNES or the arcade. I never played those. But the port on the Genesis just really looked bad. Uh, for, and, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Did he review that or he mentioned it briefly? Uh, Primal Rage. Because um, he talked about how the fatalities are for to burp and piss on people were ridiculous to, to do. It was hard to execute. Well, you could, was, like, well, I mean, you could normally burp or fart. That was just a, you know, like a how do can. Oh. Yeah, you know the um, the pissing. Well, I don't know about the burp, but I know about the fart. The the pissing was unedited in the arcade version, and when you uh, when they ported it over Super Nintendo, they uh, I think they did a black screen. You weren't allowed to see it. Well, that's why even have it at all. I, it came out in arcade first, and I'm, and I guess it was just popular enough where they're like, oh, let's put this on the home console, and Nintendo. Right, but I mean, like, if you're gonna. You know, if you're gonna, yeah, yeah, if you're gonna censor it, what's? Well, it worked for me, right? I played it in the arcade, and I was like, I want this game for Super Nintendo, so they sold one to me. You know? Oh, I'm not, I'm not saying, like, don't have the game at all. I'm just talking about like the the the, the pissing and and like oh. blanking it out, which I can understand why they did that. But I'm saying, why have that move at all? They should oh, have yeah. just taken the, the the move out itself. Oh, I think I I think yeah, it's uh, it was probably easier to code. Just like, okay, screen yeah. blank. So, well, I mean, it's, you know, kids know what's going on. Right. Well, that was the thing, right? It was, 
obvious because they, I think they were still like dripping with pee uh, and urine. But it, it's like it's like it's like you're probably right with it. It was easier to code. They were just like, all right, we'll just we'll pass your little stupid sensor crap. We'll just right. go up there and we'll it work. Whatever, we don't care. The hey. Grand Theft Auto hot coffee mod thing, right? That was like in the code. They just pushed it way back there, and it wasn't in San, in, it was in San Andreas. Um, the code was still there, but it was just completely locked off, and it took a hacker to come and get it. And as soon as one hacker opened it up and um, showed the ways in which you could hack the game to get it, uh, they had to change the ERSP rating, and then they pulled the game off the shelves. And so, so I feel like I don't know much about coding, but it sounds like it's easier just to leave it in there and just kind of cover it up some way than it is to just like have to remove some block. I, yeah, you're right. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, that, that, that pissing part, you gotta watch out because you're in trouble. <laughs> well, yeah. that was. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna put put a, a black screen over that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But as of right now in the video, put the black screen. There it is. There screen. it is. Yeah. I love so the black uh, screen. I'm looking at. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right, and okay, the next, uh, if you call this a beat 'em up, this made a brief appearance in a Bubbo's Big Adventure. Which is how I found out about it because I never heard about this game. Urban, Urban Champ. And yeah, that's all we can say about that. I guess we move on. Because <laughs> Urban what? It. Urban, yeah, Urban Champ. It's like a little, like a little simple, simple fighting game for the NES. It's in a Bubbles Big Adventure. You remember? Um, it's where it's a part. Where I think it might be in a second level or third. And uh, this a bubble fights this little guy on the street and like like three different rounds, and then in the end he knocks his head off, and then that's when a bubble goes inside the tunnel and goes to the next level. Yeah, uh, street urchins. Street urchins? Yeah. I'm urging you to tell me what you're talking about. It's um, urchin. Yeah, the, the urchin champion game. Urchin. <laughs> yep. And that game They're uh, creatures real... from the sea. Uh, and, but this game just looks real primitive. <laughs> Real primitive, and I didn't see anything. I never played it, so I can't, I can't judge it that well. But it just it looked real primitive, and I was like, I never heard of this game until now. Bubbles Big Adventure. What the heck? Why would they put a lame game like that? It looks lame. <laughs> Into a Bubbles Big Adventure. That's not a tribute to the NES. They were it's an insult. They were trying to promote it. They got a um, they got a, a partnership through YouTube or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, they was like five bucks or get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> and oh man, okay. Speaking of uh, bad rental oh, history, oh. Like, bad rentals, bad rental memories, rental history, like like you pay rent. Like, bad men mental uh, rental. <laughs> bad, bad hey, that's rentals. that's my job. Excuse me, that's my job to misspell words. <laughs> yeah. I have a bad mental, yeah, a bad mental memory right here. Uh, a bad mental uh, memory on bad rental memories? Yeah. Uh, this game for Sega Genesis, a uh, fighting game. That it all. Virtual Fighter? No. No, Slaughter Sport. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I played that. Yeah, that was a bad game. That game is... I don't... <laughs> I can't do it justice to explain how horrible it is. Injustice. Whatever. Hey, I love Slaughterhouse. <laughs> no, not Slaughterhouse. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm being me. It makes you want to slaughter yourself after playing it. it it's made from a company called Sage, I think. Wait, and it's a tournament fighting game. The boss of the game is this big fat guy. with a, a t a, His stomach has a tongue or something like that. Bear. And, <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, and, you know, welcome to the Fight Palace. And, 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 like, in this tournament fighting game, whatever, for some reason there's a move where spikes appear above your head and you can't jump. Like, a little bar of spikes appear above your head and you can't jump. Like, what the heck? It sounds like that make... one level in Double Dragon 2. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. Except it's like a little, a little uh, they, they cut and paste spikes out, out of a level and then put it right above your head. You can't jump for a second. Some sort of move or defensive mechanism or something by your opponent. Happy Wheels? No. Okay. Huh? <laughs> what? 
Oh, nothing. Oh, my bad. Uh, but yeah, Autosport, oh, it just terrible. Uh, what, what do you think, Dustin? Um, no, yeah, it was pretty horrible all the way around. I think it was horrible, not like the, well, I think why, I, I didn't own it, but I played it, and what was appealing about it, I think I played it at a friend's house, was, oh, it just looked really cool, and it wasn't. It, the, the controls sucked, the fighting sucked, it was boring. It was, it was actually, I actually, I'd actually call that game a piece of garbage, like it shouldn't have been made. Yeah. It was that bad. Like, it's, uh, you said the name, and I just instantly remembered not liking it. Like, just a visceral reaction, like threw up in my mouth a little bit kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it was indeed terrible. Wow. J-Man, Purple, be glad you didn't play that. <laughs> we are. Bash we are. <laughs> a little bit better to, to endure uh, than Slaughter Sport. So many bad memories. There's some games where you think, oh, yeah, that game sucked. But then there's those other games where you actually, when you go back and think, you have just a bad, uh, just bad memories into where it's bad, on no such thing as bad nostalgia. But <laughs> bad nostalgia. It takes you back to a time where you play that and you realize how, how much you hate it. Slaughter Sport is one of those. I did not enjoy it. There's nothing really appealing about it at all. I mean, it's just, it was just terrible. And here's another tournament final game that was terrible. Spunky did a review of this a while back. Rise of the Robots. I don't know if you all heard of that and remember that. Just a bunch of robots fighting each other. Um, in tournament fighting style. And it's not, really nothing special. But I don't know if it's so much horrible as it is just, eh, nothing special. Rise of the Robots, uh, not Rise of the Machines, not Terminator 3, but, yeah, it just, this one is, yeah, it would be a, like a futuristic type fighting game, or whatever, and it, it bombed, it, it wasn't really good, well, it was not really good. How about, um, Full House Tournament Fighter? Oh, yeah, that's right, Full mm -hmm. House Tournament Fighter, uh, Dustin didn't believe me when I told him, I said, there's a Full House Tournament Fighter. No, 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 that's the, is that the fan-made one? Yeah. yeah, that's why. That's yeah. And I go, and then I tell him it's a fan made. No, I never even right. seen much of that. Well, I mean, it, it started out as like a little joke on the ABGN episode, and then like someone actually. <laughs> yeah. Someone actually made it. There's also a full house game for the Tiger handheld. Yeah, you're telling well, me about that. No, there was. There was. It's legit. Oh yeah, we just watched the damn yeah Tiger ABGN episode. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> and so. But... But anyway, yeah. Um, Quit looking at me like that. <laughs> but have y'all even heard of Rise of the Robot? No, I've never heard of it. I have heard of it, but I, that's all I've heard. Like, I've heard the name mentioned on, I don't know, probably something Jay showed me a long time ago. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, all right, now, we're going to get to uh, one more game, or at least one more that I want to talk about. Uh, unless y'all have anything else. Um, Jay may mentioned this earlier. Survival Arts. Survival Arts? Is that like the the plights of a freshman in college going through an arts program? I'm, I'm not familiar. <laughs> yes. No. Um, <laughs> Survival Arts is a god-awful um, fighting game that... I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to not get confused with another bad fighting game. Uh, yeah, Survival Arts is just... <laughs> first of all... J-Man sent me the video of Sycophant from YouTube reviewing this game a while back. And I could not stop watching it because the review was funny. The game was atrocious. Okay, The guy gets up at 3 in the morning and goes, yeah, Sorry, i gotta, I got to talk low because uh, I still have people in the house that are still asleep. But I could not sleep because I keep laughing about this game. <laughs> and so he does a review of Survival Arts. It is one of the, the worst if not the worst fighting game, tournament fighting game ever created. All the characters in there, and a single fan said, it looks like the programmers of the game went, went inside an Arby's restaurant and just chose a random civilian and said, hey, why don't you be in our game? Because the characters in the game look stupid. You got people that look like garbage men, uh, some other generic looking guy. And just The characters are poorly designed, and it's just terrible. Yeah, I think, uh, isn't Ron Mower a playable character in that game? Yeah, and he's the worst of them all. So, so <laughs> terrible. Um, all he does is some move where uh, he just 
spasms all the time and he doesn't know what he's doing, just like he's a button masher or something. Oh, great. We're uh, quoting Sycophant now. Yeah, yeah. But Survival Arts, and I did, well, J-Man did, rather, a video of, uh, of it on YouTube. He recorded it for me because I couldn't do it on my computer because yep. my computer put up with that crap. And so he uh, went ahead and recorded the footage for me. And, and then, I, so I just check out. No, it's called Let's Laugh at Survival Arts. And then I was ad admitted into a, uh, a mental facility after not only playing the game but having to record the footage. Yeah. It was, it, so, it was a dark time. Mm. Yeah, I feel bad about that, but it was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> I, I did comment on the video like um, like six hours after, you know, Ronnie uh, tested it before he released it. And yeah. <laughs> the game is just laughable. It's so funny. But check out Sickle Fans Review, too. It's even more funny. Um, well, yeah, he had uh, uh, Richard Simmons in the game. He was actually, I think he was the, the main boss. Richard Simmons is the main boss yeah. of the game. <laughs> That's pretty excellent. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's I mean, it's kind of helpful because, you know, you're playing a game and then you see Richard Simmons and you want to sweat to the oldies. So. <laughs> uh, and the ending, the ending is pretty terrible, too, at least with the one character you beat it with. I don't know. It's just, you got to check it out. Yeah. Uh, Caution, uh, viewer discretion advised. Um, but you know what, J-Man? There's a tournament fighting game, I think, that came out a year after that that's even worse. Oh, whatever. I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, you will when you watch it. It's called Tattoo Assassins. <laughs> and <laughs> Tattoo Assassins blatantly rips off Mortal Kombat to a T. Yep. And Sickle Fan, when he did his survival arts video, he bet a million dollars a million dollars that no one can find a worse game. Then he comes back and does another video saying, you know what, I was wrong. I found a worse game than that. And he reviewed Tattoo Assassin. And he never paid me my money. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did uh, y'all, I don't, I don't know if it classifies as a beat-em-up, but y'all remember um, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker? Oh, yes. Oh, Pretty good are game. we calling that a beat-em-up? I'm not sure. I would say that's a platformer. Yeah, yeah, because it had like multiple levels you could move up. Yeah. But it's a it, it's it's a game awful on the Genesis, um, pretty good in the arcade. I enjoy yeah. playing that game in the arcade, but yeah, the, the Genesis port. Ugh. I like I never played in the arcade, but Genesis port. I, I did a video of it. I did a let's check out of it back in January two thousand nine. I, I had fun. With it. It's pretty good, and of course the music's good because it's Michael Jackson's music. You like children. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'll, I'll hold on a second. I got a knock on the door. <laughs> knock on the door. They're coming for you, Ron. <laughs> oh, have a seat. Have a seat. <laughs> what do you think? Nothing. We're just talking about Michael Jackson. Oh, really? We have a chat log here. No. No. Choo no. choo. <laughs> Destroy the hard drive, Ron. Destroy it. Yeah. Not. Yeah, Ron Moore. Why don't you put that in your podcast? Oh, what the crap is this? I got a knock on my door. Uh oh. <laughs> Well, I'll what tell you you, what, uh, you're in Waco. How are you here too? I don't. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> someone should have broke down the door of whoever programmed Tattoo Assassins. Oh, wait. Someone's at my door too. Oh, what, yeah. what is this? What is this witchcraft? Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Uh, uh, but yeah, Tattoo Assassins. Uh, I wish, wish someone would assassinate me while I was watching it because that <laughs> game was horrible. Uh, it's very laughable too. The they got a guy wearing a diaper or something. Yeah, he was the only guy that had tattoos. It's called Tattoo Assassins. The Buddha guy was the only one that had tattoos. No, Nobody else had tattoos. What are you going to call them? Tattoo Assassins. Guess who's in that game? Nancy Kerrigan. Yeah, all right. But, it, but okay, here's the thing was that she was pretty much Tanya Harding, but looked like Nancy Kerrigan. Yeah. Now, if... Uh, you know, and Daniel, I don't, I don't know how old you are, but, um, and to viewers of this, all, what are we, what are we up to? Like, like twelve views, <laughs> like, <laughs> like maybe twelve people watch this, but okay, the twelve people, I don't know how old you are either, but um, Nancy Kerrigan got pwned, um, not by Tanya Harding, 
Well, kind of, but, you know, indirectly. Um, she actually hired a guy um, to go out, like, during one of her practices, I believe, and hit her in the leg um, with a, you know, a blunt object, and pow, pony. And she was all like, why, why, daddy, or something. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And, but... Sigo fan was trying to be witty and say something funny about that that looks like Nancy Kerrigan. It turns out she pretty much is Nancy Kerrigan. The storyline, the background story, pretty much is the same. Yeah, but, you know, she didn't fight like uh, Tanya Harding would. Like, Tanya Harding was the uh, redneck, trailer trash version of Nancy Kerrigan. Yeah. And she was jealous and butt her that she wasn't as good as her. And that's, yeah. And she's like, oh, that, that ain't no damn fair. I'm going yeah. to hit her leg and she ain't going to skate no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't think of any more fighting games or beat em ups that uh, I want to mention. What about you guys? Um, I'm reminded of, for the PlayStation, a game called Pocket Fighters. Um, it was a, uh, if you've ever, if you're familiar with, like, the uh, Japanese, like, docks, dark stock, yeah, Darkstalkers series. It was like that, only it had um, the Dark the Dark Stalkers and the Street Fighter characters just miniaturized. It was a two D uh, fighter. It was incredibly fun. Uh, it was way Japanese. It was like one of the first games I had on the PlayStation One. Yeah, it was it was fun. I don't know if y'all ever played that, but that, that no. was a good game. I have three. Oh, sorry, Ronnie, were you going to... Say no, I was I've heard of it, but I never played it. Oh, okay. Well, I have three. Um, first one's Battle Arena Toshinden. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's on the PS1. They actually had three games. Um, followed the same uh, formula, you know, that we talked about earlier. Where the first one was, yeah, it's all right. Second one was awesome. Third one... <laughs> That's how that works. Go again. Good game, yep. great music. Really good music. Uh, actually, I think from that one, um, in my own personal opinion, the music from the first one was the best. Anyways, um, second game is... Uh, it, it qualifies because I'm saying it qualifies. Um, but Shido Blade, for, also for the PS1, and they, they made at least two of those. Yeah. They made any more than that. But I consider that like a, it's it's more of a, I guess it's like a slash em up, but I consider it like a beat em up game, and that's a really cool game, really fun. Um, and the third one is, um, oh man, hang on, I I, I gotta, is, oh there it is, yeah, it's uh it's J Man's Tournament Fighter. <laughs> now this is a game where you have to. You have to fight through a league of awful fighters from the most awful games. You have to fight through all of them. And then if you win, and you get enough points like Slam City, if you've ever played Slam City, then you get to meet me and fight me. Oh, I got to skip all the fighting. Cool. Yep. <laughs> she got to skip all the fighting. Is that uh, Konami code? Up, up, down, down, left, <laughs> left, right, right. <laughs> no, B-A-B-A, -B -A, select start. <laughs> ah. B-S-B-S. -B -S. But, but, no. Because here's the thing, is there's, um, there's no cheating. Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> no ECW mode for this one. <laughs> exactly. It sucks. There's no game shark. There's no game genie. None of that. But when you fight me, well, I'll just cower in the corner and like not even let you hit me. <laughs> That's garbage. I, I, like, and if, like, and I think and if you and if you try to kick me, game over immediately. <laughs> and then you get like a like a Friday the Thirteenth ending. <laughs> Oh, what happens is... You and your family and friends have died. <laughs> what happens is you get beat up, you rage quit. You rage quit. No, you just do the invincible tactic of 
of getting in the corner and then just jumping and doing jump kicks up and down in the corner. And you Ooh, just wait till yeah. your opponent comes and tries to hit you, and then they get hit with your foot. Those, like are, the, those are both really good ideas. That's the, uh, yeah, in the corner, jump up and down with the kick. I could do the, then, crotch, yeah, the corner crouch down uh, crotch kick. Oh, yeah, you or can Or I could just crouch break your foot. You could fight through the whole game, get through all the awful, awful enemies from all the beat-em-ups. And then you face me, and then I, no, this is, no, you weren't supposed to get here, and then I'd leave. <laughs> That's what would happen. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then you maybe, maybe you have, like, a very, like, deep... Anyways, like, Purple shows up, and you can't hurt Purple because she's a girly. And then she just crotch kitches. Yeah, that. <laughs> crotch kitches. There we go. I, I think it would be, like, more realistic. Like, you'd have... Uh, they go through the hundreds and hundreds of worst, you know, boss fights ever, and they get to you... And then you have just this deep confession where you say, you've defeated hundreds and hundreds of my minions. I actually don't have any chance in hell of beating you. No, that's, that would be Wii Guy's game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need to meet this Wii Guy. Well, he's yeah, well I mean, let's, you know, we're, we're playing it up now, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's cool. He is cool. <laughs> that, dude's, that dude is a... Uh, He's a beast at video games. A beast. He's the one that likes Target Renegade. We make fun of him about. Uh, we're all we're really just jealous that he plays video games better than we do. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, like Silver Surfer, and yeah. Oh wait, wait, um, this is a video game podcast. I thought we were. I thought we were talking yeah, about beat 'em ups and. You know. Is that is that what we've been talking about? I thought we were just talking about like uh, a bunch of like Ronnie's fantasies and things. Yeah. Oh well. You, wait, you, wait. You're telling me yeah. double dra double dragons not an innuendo? It's not. <laughs> it's not in my window. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, there's two more fighting games I just thought of. Skullgirls, one of them. It's a new one. On, or uh, probably not brand new, but it's been out I think for a little while. Have y'all heard of it? Nope. Uh, no. I've Skull heard Girl. of the 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 like the girl that. Carries a chainsaw. He's heard of lollipop. Her, yeah, the, the boyfriend's yeah, lollipop, lollipop chainsaw. I think so, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was lollipop, lollipop, lollipop. About a month or so ago, and I was playing, I was just watching him play. It looks kind of weird, like old, old 40s cartoon fighting game or something. Weird. And, uh, what else? Um, my, one of my favorites, I can't believe we forgot to mention this Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters for the SNES. I loved Kermit Fighters for the SNES. Real good game. But the Genesis version was terrible. Even though on the, Genesis version, on the Genesis version, you can play as Purple, I mean, April O'Neil yeah. and Casey Jones. That was pretty cool. But the rest of the game was pretty but sucked. But TMNT Tournament Fighter for SNES was good. And not the NES version. The NES version is terrible. Um... But Team AT Tournament Fighters for SNES, pretty epic. What do you guys think? I think, um, I think that I should keep thinking. Uh, Justin? Um, C. <laughs> All right, Purple? Um, I think April should have learned how to take care of herself a little better. Whatever, <laughs> you're just jealous. <laughs> oh. oh, burn. Yes, yeah. because she can't do anything without help from mutants. That's hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's hot. Rock? Oh, bug. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> well, at least you don't wear a, a banana yeah, yellow a banana raincoat. Suit. Yeah. <laughs> banana raincoat wearing bitch. <laughs> <laughs> plagiarism. <laughs> eh, eh, plagiarism. <laughs> As a as a child, that became like a trigger for attraction. So see someone in a yellow raincoat, instantly attracted. Yeah. Yep. Carmen San Diego. Oh, like, yeah. That was yeah. good. Pick him up. <laughs> Anyone who had like a, a red uh, a red long uh, like coat and that that fedora, it was like, whoa, is that Carmen San Diego? I need to find her. Yep. Got a match. Did we ever see anything more than half her face? By the way. I don't think so. Um, well, I'm sure there's a... Well, there's 
what is it, Rule 34 of the Internet? <laughs> Any, anything is uh, available to be made into porn. So, uh, uh, yeah. So you're saying not, not, not then, but, but now, probably most, most definitely. Yes, I'm saying anything on the internet has probably been made into porn in some fashion. And let's go ahead and end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ron's thinking I can cut back audio from the end and just cut this all out. If, if it gets more in the middle, it's a little more difficult to edit. Uh, yeah. But, um... Oh, we go, man, you done hacked all our computers. Damn it. <laughs> go and let Dustin plug his channel. Go ahead. Uh, sure, yeah. So, um, I, I just... Thanks for having me on the podcast. It was fun. Um, my name is Dustin Payne. You can follow me at Created Love on Twitter, but... We do, me and uh, my friend Derek Rogers, you can actually follow him on, at Derek Logic on Twitter. Uh, we do Game Nimbus, uh, which is an iTunes podcast about video games. It's uh, more up to date than the retro stuff we talked about today, but um, we just started our YouTube channel to kind of go along with our podcast. And the things you can kind of see on Game Nimbus, one word, is uh, we'll have unboxings, tutorials, we'll have Let's Plays, and reviews. So we're going to do all of that. Um, actually, this weekend we'll have the uh, Wii, uh, Wii U unboxing. We got the limited edition Zelda uh, Wii U. And I myself uh, kind of reserved about it, but we're just going to unbox it, show what it's about. And a lot of content until like the PlayStation 4 comes out that we're going to be just dropping on the channel is going to be uh, should you buy a Wii U. We have Pikmin 3 coming up. We have the Wind Waker HD remake we're going to be talking about. Um, we're just going to be jacking with the pad and seeing if, like, you know, if Nintendo has a future in the home console or not. And so, so yeah, so, it, you know, you can subscribe to Game Nimbus. Uh, let us know how we're doing. We always appreciate that. And um, right now, there's not a whole lot of content up there. We've got um, my PlayStation Blogger video I submitted, a uh, brief uh, video I did about my Pikmin 3 game coming in. But um, we're actually, we'll have, uh, hopefully, at least one video a week coming up consistently for, you know, until, until uh, indefinitely. So, so if you keep it uh, locked into that, you can know the latest, the latest stuff. So it sounds like a good place to land for retro stuff. So if there's any folks listening who dig the more recent, you know, releases, we'll, we'll be covering that. It's fun stuff. Cool, cool. Yep. All right, cool. Thanks a lot. Um, so, yeah. And that is it. We are out of here for this podcast. Thank you very much for listening to all 12 of you. Listening. All 12. Oh, don't, don't blow up the uh, ex- expectations there. <laughs> <laughs> I know this, this is going to be like a two-hour podcast. I don't even know if 12 people will listen to that. Yeah. Probably not. Stars. It's like a, a YouTube video that's like two hours long and it has no actual video. It's just all audio. Yeah. And we'll, we'll start putting in timestamps of, yeah. Four minutes, 25 seconds. Useless stuff. <laughs> 13 minutes and 30 seconds. More useless stuff. <laughs> so. All right, so that is it. We're out of here. I'm Ron Moore. I'm the J-Man. And Hopefully Dustin comes out before Tuesday. Sorry, Dustin. No, Hopefully it's cool. comes out before Tuesday because GTA 5, yay. Yeah. Duck tells, woohoo. Mortal yeah. Kombat. Yeah. Oh, yes. Epic finish. Ultra, 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 ultra. Yeah. (laughs) All right, guys. God bless. Take care. Have a good one. Later.